Okay, so Alyssa and I have been dealing an awful lot with this. <laughs> because we both have big ones of this. No, I don't know if it's because we're female or whatever, but it's a situation that a lot of women face and some men face, and that is that our heaviest part of our body... Actually, can I just have you come here for just a second and do this sure. with me really quickly? Just for a really quick second. Her back's a little sore, but let's just discuss <laughs> the awesome, um, enormous Curve. roundness <laughs> that goes like this. I like big butts and I cannot lie. <laughs> you other brothers can't deny. <laughs> yeah, that one right there. Let's do this right here. When a girl walks in, <laughs> thing in your face. <laughs> I get swelled. Well, <clears throat> anyway, the problem is, is that when we're skiing, um, it's it's really difficult not to have this part move around. And so for years and years, we were both told, stop moving your hip. And so, I don't know about you, but I spent a lot of time trying to ski, which is really a dynamic thing that oftentimes includes moving your body a whole lot without moving this part at all. And so... The difficulty with that is that you end up trying to steer these without moving this, or you try to keep this quiet and moving this way while you're steering these without moving this. But the issue is, is that this must move. Right. It must. And if you don't move it, it ends up coming with something else. So it's moving. So one of the things that I was working on with Kurt is the fact that this must move, but it must move appropriately. And we've talked about this a little bit before, that like it needs to, so if the, if the slope is going one way and you're headed toward the slope, so say I'm making a turn that's like this, if I'm inclinated like this, I'm not leveling my pelvis to the slope. In order to level my pelvis to the slope, or begin leveling my pelvis to the slope, it's got to move, right? So then, I'm skiing along and I'm thinking, okay, as I'm making a turn that goes this way, and I want you to notice the fact that this is an old thought pattern and so my pelvis is coming with me, okay? As I'm making a turn that goes this way, do you notice how these are rotating that direction? Although I think my legs are rotating more. I need to also be leveling my pelvis, which would be this line right here. So I start raising this hip to try and level my pelvis. Does this look like an effective skiing position to you? No. Not really. Like it has... I understand what you're getting. It has aspects that look like it's sort of an amalgam of an image that I'm trying to move toward, but it's not a balanced, effective position that is a result of good skiing or good balance, okay. right? And I know this seems a little esoteric, but stay with me because here's what happened. So I knew that I needed to stop my pelvis from tracking with my skis, mm. and I knew that I needed to be leveling my pelvis as it was going into the turn. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about raising it to level it, which wasn't working, and I knew that these are supposed to be turning independently while this is raising, so I'm ending up in a situation with these turned, this raised, and this trying to push back. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not really well balanced right now. <laughs> But I knew that I was kind of like in the ballpark, right? Like when you see really good skiers, really good skiers, not like golf cart instructor skiers, but like good intuitive skiers, you get this picture where this is moving this way, but not necessarily this way. The, the other issues that I was facing in this are that the proprioceptive awareness that you have deep in your hip socket around the head of the femur is low. So it's very difficult to tell if your femur has done this, has your hip come with it? Mm -hmm. So lots of times we'll do this and it's come some, but I feel my leg moving and I don't feel my hip moving, so I don't think my pelvis has come with me. Mm -hmm. 
So, and because you can't ski with a giant mirror in front of you, it's really difficult to tell. Mm -hmm. And then you get into movement analysis and people watch film of you and they say, the hip is coming with or the hip is twisting. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a couple of different ways that the hip can twist. Tell me if this looks familiar, okay? So I'm in a turn going this way. So this is my outside leg and I've done this. <laughs> Does that look familiar? Yeah. Okay, am I leveling my pelvis? No. I've passed it, right? So if I'm coming in and then I've allowed it to do this, I may be attempting to level my pelvis but my pelvis is rotating outside the turn. So this hip is pointing that way, mm -hmm. and my skis are pointing this way. And one might think of that as some form of counter, but it's not. <laughs> so, so we consider that dumping. That's something that women do a lot. We dump. So we get going into the turn, we think we're being really sporty, and then this happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to stop moving the hip, then, makes the hip track with the skis. Okay, look, now I'm not dumping anymore. But now I'm tracking with my skis, so I don't have a lot of upper lower body separation. Or counter, shh, that's a bad word. <laughs> so, it's true, shh, don't say it. So, but the point is, is that, so, okay, to get it to stop from doing this, we've got it to do this, now it's squared to the legs, now it's following. Okay, so now we keep it from following. So now the legs are turning and it's doing this. Now, if I'm not leveling and the legs are turning, what's happening is, is that I'm getting some sort of funky other situation. Bracing. Bracing, which looks like this. So now it's behind and trying not to turn there's all kinds of weird things that can happen. Rick Vetramile. I'm going to say this. Arigatou gozaimashita, smart man. Did something really, really, really amazing. Okay, so we're out on the hill, and Rick says to me, I want you to imagine that there is a steel bar that is running across your body, and that you have a carabiner, look I happen to have one. I did not have this on the hill. You happen to have a carabiner that is attached to your center of mass. That carabiner, hold on, hold on. That carabiner is looped around that pole. Okay, do you see this? Carabiner yes. now looped around the center pole. Mm -hmm. So he had me get into a regular skiing stance and do a railroad track turn. Now normally, it, I'm gonna just bring this with me so you can see my feet. Normally a railroad track turn starts just from the ankle, right? You tip your ankle one way. Your jaw is going there. <laughs> I do that when I ski too. <laughs> Every time I make a turn I open my mouth and go uh, uh, which is why I can't ski with um, your phones in because they fall out when I open my mouth. <laughs> I do the same thing when I use scissors. I go. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. So, when, normally when you do a railroad track turn, let's just use my hands instead, you try to do it just from the feet. Rick said to me, let's see if we can get our edge angle from our skis, and this is only a drill, don't do it while you're skiing, to get the, this understanding. And I want you to get your edge angle by pulling your hips across your skis. Try not to pull them so far that you end up on your inside ski, right? Oftentimes we can pass our outside ski as we tip in. So, but you have this bar here, so you have to slide your hips along the bar this way, okay? So, if I'm gonna pull my skis, I'm going slow on a flat green slope, and I'm gonna pull my skis to their edge by tipping my whole body in, like this, okay? Because I have to track along this pole, what just happened? Did my hip level? Mm -hmm. Did it rotate? Mm -mm. Oh my god! <laughs> Let's go the other way. Hold on. Did it rotate? Mm -mm. Did it level? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so then 
I was thinking to myself about the fact that often, excuse me, oftentimes we look at skiers at a lower level that we're working with um, who are trying to stop being tick-tock skiers. And so as soon as we started doing this drill, I got really concerned about tick-tocking, about which means like basically dumping into the turn and then dumping into the turn so the turn doesn't have any shape. The secret to it is this piece where as the hip levels, the pressure builds to the outside ski. If you're paying attention to where your center of mass is over that outside ski so that the force of the skier is lining up with the force pushing back against the outside ski, you're in the right place. Mm -hmm. Now, from this perspective, we always have some forward movement. I myself am working on trying to get to the center of the ski all of the time rather than to the tip of the ski. I want the whole ski to engage so that I have juice through the whole turn, not just a hook up and a sting at the bottom. I want it to get on and stay on and come off as I begin to release it. Mm -hmm. And here's the genius of this bit. So if you are to take your imaginary pole and rather than just doing a railroad track turn, trusty assistant, let's see if we can scooch these for their part. I just don't want them to fall over. Will you hang on to that one? Or will you hang on to this one? Okay, sorry, trusty assistance. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let's say now we're going into go we're gonna go into a much more dynamic turn, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go into the turn this way. Yeah, I'm gonna have a little bit of forward movement, but I'm not gonna open up and over lever my ski, right? My idea, my only focus here at this level is to take these hips and move them inside along this bar. And here's what starts to happen. Because I have to move them along this bar, the further I go in, the more level they get. And so if I end up, can I get up here? Will you still be able to see me? Hold that. Okay, I'm going to use you too. If I end up, are you strong enough? If I end up way down here and over my outside ski, my hip is leveling with this bar. Now I can have some counter whatever it is that I want depending on the size of the turn. Oh my god, did I say counter? I can have some upper lower body separation that's functional um, over my outside ski. But what makes it really possible for me to have um, quiet power from this very strong, heavy, powerful hip joint is that it's simply moving along this plane. And the idea of moving it along this plane makes this happen and keeps this from happening and keeps this from happening. So my energetic intention of my core is down the hill while my legs are steering under me. And it fixed it! 